thank you for joining me for a Inkscape tutorial. We're going to be making a quick little Christmas ornament. We'll show you how to do that. So first go ahead and uh, have your window open where your files are. These are our image files that we're going to use. And I like to again uh, use Chrome and I take the window and I shrink it down to where I can see the window and I can see my Inkscape icon and I'll show you why I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick, uh, let's see, I'll pick this one right here. I'm going to right click on it and I'll download it. Now since I'm using Chrome, watch what happens. A banner pops up down here with a copy of the file there. If you left click on this little arrow, it'll show you some information that's helpful, such as what folder it's downloaded to. But I like to simply do this. I'm going to click, hold, and drag this icon from here and drag it over to my Inkscape icon. And notice Inkscape is the one that's illuminated, so I'm going to drop it right there on Inkscape, and Inkscape's going to open it up. Now, uh, the first thing I always recommend you do when you're starting a new project in Inkscape is go to File, go to Document Properties, and adjust the display units and the unit of your piece uh, to something more workable, something easier to understand. Pixels are great for graphic stuff or if you're working with web pages, but for actually building something uh, for a laser cutter, inches or millimeters are usually a little bit easier to understand. Now for the width and height, uh, we're going to be making this piece about four inches, uh, but I'm going to give myself a little bit more wiggle room on my working piece here of seven inches and seven inches. All right, I'm going to zoom out and see the whole thing. And as you can tell, our little uh, image there is pretty small, but that's all right. We can work with that in a bit. I'm going to go over here to my circle icon and put a circle out there. And again, it doesn't matter what size the circle is when I put it out there. I'm going to go over here to this icon, get back my normal tool. When I click on it, I'm going to go ahead and make this uh, the size I want. To do that, I'm going to go up to my W and H, that's width and height. I'm going to select my object first. You see it's uh, showing this bounding box here and the little anchors, arrows. You can grab that and do stuff with. You could try to eyeball it, but I find it easier if you need specific measurements to just put those measurements in up here. So again, I'm going to select my object, type in, let's say four inches and four inches hit enter and there we go perfect circle now I'm gonna go ahead and make my shield a little bit larger in there so to do that I click hold and drag it now like I said before if you uh, take those arrows you can try to drag it but you want to keep the proportions correct especially if it's some sort of an image asset that uh, somebody has a style guide for example and they really want the ratios and proportions to stay the same here's a little something you could do you click on it and when you drag it hold down the control button on your keyboard. So hold down the control button on your keyboard and when you do that, no matter which one of those arrows you grab, the proportions are going to remain the same. So that's a nice feature. I'm going to hit control Z to undo to show you this. Again, just like with the circle, if you know specifically what those width and height values need to be, you can just enter them in right there. Now, to keep the proportions the same, you click that lock and notice what it says when you lock it. You change both width and height by the same proportion, so that's a nice feature. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, kind of eyeball this thing. All right, now, if I want to put this in the middle, you see that's uh, kind of off a little bit, how could I do that? Well, this is another fun tool that Inkscape has. You go to Object, you go to Align and Distribute, and you can line up anything you want. So watch how this works. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the Align and Distribute menu. There it is, we have Align. You have all these options, distribute, lots of options, and then relative to last selected, first selected page, etc. Let me show you how this thing works. First, you do need to actually select not just one, but uh, two pieces. Of course, if you just select one, and I do it relative to page, watch what happens. There we go. I can line that one item up relative to the page itself, the big working page here. But uh, for me, I, I want them to be aligned to relative to each other. So here's how I do that. I select both of them. Then I need to consider relative to what? Let's look at uh, biggest object, for example. The thing that you choose relative to, that's going to be the thing that does not move. Everything else is going to move relative to the thing you choose. I'll show you an example of what I mean. Let's say I'm going to choose the circle first. Hold down my shift button to select and click on the next thing. Then the shield. So the circle, then the shield. 
If I choose relative to my first selected object, watch what happens when I center it on the vertical and horizontal axis. Watch what moves. The shield moves. That's what relative means. I'll show you another example. Let's say the uh, circle, for whatever reason, was uh, really off far to the side, <clears throat> and I wanted it relative to the shield. I've got another option. I can select both of them with a big bounding box and choose relative to the smallest object. And I'll center it on the vertical and the horizontal axis. So watch closely. There you go. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a little uh, circle up here for the hook that's going to hang it on to the uh, Christmas tree. I have a few options. I can make, make a brand new circle, or I can just take this circle, hit Control D, duplicate that circle, and then just shrink it down. I'm going to hold the Control button, shrink it down a little bit. I want it a little bit smaller than that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and specify what my size is going to be. I'm going to put this down to, let's say, point. Uh, four inches and 0.4 inches there we go on both sides now notice from this size and this is zoom out it looks like the circle disappeared but if I zoom in a little bit there we go it's there now why is it so faint well that has to do with stroke and fill let me show you what I mean I'm going to close up my line and distribute menu for a second we'll use it again in a second if I look down here at my fill and stroke it does tell me a little bit of information but sometimes that's hard to understand I'm going to double click in this area my fill and stroke menu is going to pop up over here. I don't want this to have any fill paint. That means paint on the inside. Watch closely. If I fill this in with, let's say, yellow, purple, something like that. Well, for laser cutting, remember, it doesn't matter what color it is. So I'm going to go ahead and have no fill. Stroke paint, I want it to be full black, full opacity. Now, what might happen sometimes when you are making circles, let's say like this big one right here, and you don't see your circle? What that could mean is that um, maybe the opacity is zero. See that? I'm going to zoom back out. See, it's hard to see that. doesn't mean it's not there. It means the opacity, for whatever reason, is set to zero. Now, that could have been, um, perhaps, if you're on a shared computer, whoever used the computer last uh, might have set that opacity for their project. I'm going to go to Stroke Style, and um, it doesn't matter for a laser cutter how wide this line is, but I find it comfortable visually if I just set them all to the same thing 0 0.005 again it doesn't matter for the laser cutter but the laser cutter no matter if this line right here were half an inch wide or three inches wide it's still going to draw a line or cut a line right in the center of that line okay so I'm going to go back to uh, making this circle at the center top of that one I'm going to open up my align and distribute and I'm going to do relative to largest object, biggest object, because I want the little circle to move relative to the big one. If I had the big one move now, it could mess up the alignment with the shield. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to click on biggest object. Watch. There you go. Oops, I put it right in the middle. Oh, that's all right. Watch. I can simply do this. Click on this. I know it's aligned this way and this way, so I'm just going to use my up arrow and scoot it up more or less where I want it. That's pretty good got a little bit of overlap which is exactly what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to make another smaller circle on the inside. I just did control D to duplicate that. I'm going to hold my control button, shrink it down a little bit, and I want to center it on that. So watch again. I'm going to select both of those and I'm going to select relative to biggest object which in this case is this outside circle. I'll center. Alright now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and shrink it, sorry, uh, lower it just a little bit. There we go. Now, I want to join this circle with this one so that when the laser cuts, it's going to come around here like this, cut out that circle, and then keep on going so that this circle joins up with this one. So here's how I do that. I select both of these objects. I go to Path, and I union them. Now, if you notice the icons here, it kind of gives you an idea of what some of these functions do. So watch what happens to these two circles when I click this Union function. There we go. That's exactly what I want right there. And that's it. That's how we make a very simple ornament. Now, in the case of uh, this, I want to double check to make sure the laser is going to cut that. So I'm going to click on this Edit Path by Node tool. Just kind of hover over everything you see. It highlights in red. What that tells me is all of this stuff is ready for laser cutting. All right, thank you for joining me for this uh, quick and easy uh, tutorial for how to make a Christmas ornament.